Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and my cupboard that I'm recording in. Today, I this video is going to be the first of two parts because I didn't want to make a 40 minute video because watching that all in one go is just a bit long. So this video is going up on Wednesday and part two should be up on Friday. So today I'm building a set of four terrace homes and I was really excited to build these because the other day I went into the city in Sydney if you didn't know I live in or I live in western Sydney and we went in to go to the Christmas markets which was ridiculously quiet because there's no tourists around so it was actually really nice and it ended up being kind of a micro disaster though because I left everything I needed at home I thought we were only going in to look at the markets and then we actually ended up going on a ferry across to Manly, which was way further than I thought it was. And I didn't have a go card with me. I didn't have my license. I didn't have my debit card. And it was kind of a bit of a disaster, but it all turned out in the end. And it was really fun because I got to wear my Christmas dress that I spent two days making. So that was really exciting. Anyway, in Sydney, because the area is really old, and it was where the first fleet originally settled. They have all these Victorian era inspired terrace homes, like they're literally everywhere in the city, especially around Paddington has a lot of really expensive terrace homes, but they're all really beautiful. Um, architecturally, they're really beautiful. And I really wanted to build them in The Sims and I finally got to do that and I am so excited and I'm so happy with how they turned out. I used a lot of inspiration pictures from Pinterest. I think I had a few different floor plans I found for inspiration and a few front picks because some of them would have different roofing. A lot of them had this style of asymmet asymmetrical roofing, I'd call it. And some of them just had kind of like a fence looking thing on top, but I really like this style of roof the most. I think it, it looked really interesting and it was kind of the best suited to these homes. And a lot of these homes, they're either really nice and have been renovated recently, or they've just kind of been rebuilt from the inside, keeping the external area or they're still really run down and there's lots of things that are broken or a bit old or in some questionable colour schemes. So I tried to reflect that in these builds and a couple of them are a bit more modern. I have more of a modern industrial one, one that's a bit more white modern. And then there's one that's kind of an in-between, like mid-century. It's been updated a little bit, but they might've just changed things that really needed changing over the years. And then I have one and it's my favorite one and it just looks like nothing has changed. It looks really old. It actually looks kind of, some people are either gonna love it or hate it. Like it looks kind of grotty, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And with doing that, I tried to give each of these homes their own personality. So the Sims that live them could kind of have their personality match the home and they could pick the one that suited them the most or that suited you and your sims the most. So they are done up a little bit more. The one on the end that I'm currently roofing, I added that little extension and I put glass all around it because a lot of the ones that I looked at, either in the city, I looked at some realestate.com listings for them or just general Pinterest photos. They had an extension added on the back and they made the back wall either completely glass or they just had those sliding accordion doors to open it up to the outside. So because this one had a bit more room on the end, I tried to extend it out and make it reflect that style of home. And I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end. I also ended up fencing in between all the homes and putting a fence from Eco Lifestyle and covering it with a bit of greenery and shrubbery just to try and shield you from the neighbours so no one's peeping over your backyard because that's you don't want to drop a few million on a house just to have someone peep over your backyard that's that's not ideal so I did use some greenery to cover the fence and make it look like they'd had vines growing up it which I suppose doesn't really make sense when the floors 
all tile, but you could say they cut out like a half tile strip to have it grow up, which would make sense in real life, but in The Sims, it would have just had to be too thick to make sense. Anyway, with these homes, I used the Strangerville windows, fences, and doors to try and give them some consistency, but I changed the colours of each one. I also used the same roof tile but I just changed the colours so that way they look similar even though they're all pretty different. And I imagine that over the years they didn't really want to replace the fences because I think historically they're protected and you have to, you can just rebuild them. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But I imagine that's kind of the case. So maybe they just painted them to make it look like the original, to maintain the original architecture but to make it suit their house better and I'm really happy with how it looks. It does make them match a lot better and it gives some consistency even though they're all so different. I also really like that little bump out on the black house, how it comes out two tiles and I love that it's painted black on two of the sides and white on the other one. I just, it, I don't know why, but that little detail of someone just like painting their side of the wall and the other people painting their side of the wall, it just brings me a lot of joy and I think it adds a lot of realism to the build, which is always really nice. The layout of them was kind of hard to, to build because I wanted them to be a bit different. I didn't want them all to look the same. They're also all one bedroom and two bathrooms, one bathroom upstairs and one bathroom downstairs, I'm pretty sure. I did try and make sure I had at least two bathrooms in each of them, except for the second home from the left, the black and white one, which has an extra single bed in case you want to have a pet in your home. Because if you play in this with the roommate's feature, there's this really annoying thing where if you have a pet, they need their own sim bed. So if I only had four double beds in the whole build, then you would only be able to have either three roommates and one pet plus your sim. Or, no, you would have only been able to have two roommates and a pet plus your sim. Or you would have only been able to have your sim and then three roommates, which would be the other tenants living in the other houses. So I added that extra bed in one of them just to allow a bit more freedom. So if you wanted to have two sims living in your home, you could. If you wanted to have just your sim and a pet, you could. If you want to have your sim, a pet, and another sim living with you, then you could always just replace one of the offices in one of the houses with a bed. I did try and put one in the green house. I was going to put a bed up the top and have it be a two bedroom but I ended up turning it into an office instead, which you'll see in a minute. With the kitchen in the green room, I or the greenhouse, I also put the laundry, the washer dryer in there, which I think looks really fun. And that way it kind of makes it easier to multitask. So while you're cooking, you can cook your dinner and do your laundry at the same time if you want, or you can have an ironing board set up there while you're making breakfast or making tea whatever you want, whatever suits you and your sims. And I know that once you place a single laundry washing machine or dryer on the lot, your sims have to do laundry. So I did end up putting a laundry, a washer dryer in each of the homes. I, I think that's the only house that I put it in the kitchen though. One of the second house I built a little room for it at the back, which looks so cute. I think it's just such a cute idea to have a little laundry outside because you do have to go outside and then into the little room to get to your laundry room. I didn't put any um, clotheslines on the lot though. They're all just washer dryer combos. But if you wanted to put like a communal clothes dryer, clothesline, washing line. Yeah, if you wanted a communal washing line, you could always just stick one down the side and or stick it up on one of the balconies even. Some of the balconies, the top balconies at the front are all too wide and the bottom balcony is uh, one wide and then there's more balconies at the back because when I was looking at these houses, they don't have many, they obviously don't have many windows inside except for the front and back because they're, the interior walls all touch. So that way 
they have lots of balconies, so if your Sims need some fresh air, they can go out into their own little yard, or they can go up on their balcony, so that's really nice. The other fun part is you do get to pick from the four homes, depending on your sim. So maybe if you sim's a bit more modern, if they're kind of like a cool girl, they might want to live in the bright, airy home that's on the end, which hasn't been built yet in the video. Or they might be a bit more butch, not to, I don't know, stereotype, but they might. You might want to have a butch sim that lives in an industrial modern house because that might suit their style and who they are. So you have that option, or this one is a little bit more of a family home, or just for young sims, so maybe you have a couple living in this home because it's fairly neutral. So that way they can both live there together, or there's one home, which is my favourite, and it's very eclectic and colourful, and it looks like it's kind of gross. <laughs> like, you're either going to love it or hate it, but I love it, I'm obsessed with it. I did try and put either a hot tub or a pool in most of these houses as well, except the third one, which was an intentional choice, which I'll talk about later. But this one has a hot tub on the little platform, which I think looks really cute. I think the platforms really helped make these houses seem a little bit more interesting on the interior. Maybe they've added the platform later and just stacked it on top of the previous flooring, but I think it helps break it up a little bit and keep it less flat and keep them from all looking the same. I did put the same tile throughout as well. I imagine that it's kind of hard to replace the tile in the backyard, especially it being that chevron tile. So I kept the original tile <laughs> throughout the house. I also added a greenery wall on the side because I did see that in a couple of homes I looked at and I just thought it looked so beautiful and it helped kind of hide the ugly windows because the windows on the side of these just do not look pretty at all. So that really helped make it look a bit more interesting and make it look less gross. In this little shed out the back, I ended up adding a fizzing station. And I did put a little tall planter so you can grow fruits and things to make your juice from. And then I added a dartboard just to keep it a little bit interesting. And I can't remember what I think I added some gym equipment actually. And then on the side, I put the roller door from City Living as well as a roof that I put on the ground and made it look like a little ramp so potentially that could be a little garage if we ever get cars in The Sims 4 or it could just be a little storage room because I know I've seen a few where they do have that in the backyard or they have a nearby garage for your Sims to store their items. Yeah so I think nearly done with this green house and just furnishing the upstairs I managed to fit a couple of chess tables in so ideally if your sims are missing or need to build a certain skill there's enough skill building items on the whole lot that you could always just go and visit your neighbors and utilize their things or they could come over yours you can always just lock the doors and keep them out though if you don't want them in which may be a little bit confusing because if you want to keep them out of your house you'd have to probably lock the door i think you can lock it exclusively to housemates and lock out all your roommates so that way they aren't able to enter your apartment but any sims you invite over will be able to however if you lock the doors of other houses it might make it a bit more confusing if roommates friends come over because they won't be able to get in there but your sims but the roommates of other sims so all your roommates could go into each other's houses they just won't be able to come into yours which is a little bit annoying and it kind of loses the realism of it a little bit but it still works and i'm still really excited to play in this and play with some sims and have some roommates in my houses and just have them annoy me. <laughs> um, I put a little, I felt like I really needed something up at the top of the hallway because there just wasn't really anything. I couldn't put anything practical there so I did just add some incense and some shelving 
I also had originally a small one by three bathroom in this room because I was going to make it a bedroom and I would much rather each bedroom have its own little bathroom at least but then it didn't really seem practical and I'd prefer to put a desk in there. I did try and fit a desk in each of the houses because you seem you need a computer or literally everything. So I did manage to squish one in each home. And I furnished each of the decks either with an easel or just some chairs because I imagine it would be really fun to just catch a cup of coffee in the morning and go and sit up in your deck and people watch. It's one of my favourite hobbies. Love people watching. Uh, the bathrooms are all pretty plain. They look pretty much the same no matter which apartment you're in. They're all fairly basic and boring. They're nothing too exciting. They're all pretty small as well. I also added a bike on every lot because I figured since we don't have cars, it's kind of practical to have a bike in your house. And where these homes are located in Sydney, the area is pretty small and it's typically close to shops and things and definitely within walking distance. So it's, it's pretty handy if this was in Sydney, obviously. Your sins could just jump on their bike and ride down the street for their, their milk and their bread and their butter. And I did add a little courtyard sort of thing in front of them. A lot of the houses I looked at, they either had just plain tile or an overgrown kind of lawn with some, I don't know, weeds, I suppose, which isn't that exciting. So I went with sort of a happy medium and I added a little bit of garden with some flowers that match each house and a tiny little courtyard so you can either replace it with skill building items for your sims if you want or it's just got some more seating. I do end up putting a lot of seating throughout and just I run out of things to put and there's never anything like really interesting that you could stick in your front yard apart from maybe a little chair but there is lots of places for them to sit because you know sims can be lazy maybe they just need to sit down and take a breather. Anyway we are about to start on the black apartment and I tried to shake it up a little bit with this one by putting the kitchen like immediately in the front door which I have seen it done like it's not an uncommon thing to walk straight into your kitchen it's obviously not the most ideal but I thought it looked pretty cool in this case I do end up changing the tile that I've gotten there just because it doesn't really suit the style of the house and I kept the same um flooring and wall flooring and wall painting decor wall wall texture I did keep the same flooring and wall texture that I used throughout just to keep it a bit more consistent and it's not really that uncommon to have wood or the same in your kitchen as you do in the rest of your house I would have preferred to have some tile but it just it looked a bit out of place walking straight into tile so I didn't think that'd be very pleasant especially in winter if it's cold you don't really want to come from the cold outside into some cold tiles <laughs> uh not ideal no <coughs> anyway I originally had the jungle adventure counters which I am obsessed with the jungle adventure counters I think they look so good they're probably my favorite counter in the whole game at the moment I did replace them for these base game ones and used jungle adventure appliances which also look very nice with a glass of backsplash which it would probably get pretty dirty if this was real life but I just oh, I love how the glass backsplash looks I think it looks so nice and it definitely makes the room seem a little bit bigger because it reflects the space I added some pet bowls because if you want to live in this apartment, you might want to have a pet. And there's some little bowls for them. I think I put pet beds or bowls in a few of the apartments. Depending on which one you choose to live in, you could either delete them from the other apartments or just keep them and pretend that your roommates slash neighbours have pets living there. I also really like the pans over the door. I'm not sure why. 
but it just cut or well, not the door the window it just seemed really interesting like maybe they didn't want curtains maybe they can't afford them maybe that's the only space they have to hang their pans I tried to put a lot of greenery in this house as well because it is pretty dark and I wanted to keep it a bit lively so I put some plants throughout I put a plant wall behind the dining table which I think it looks really pretty I really like the eco lifestyle plants I ended up using a lot of eco lifestyle throughout so that's pretty a lot of eco lifestyle I used a lot of movie hangout stuff especially in the third apartment and I used a bit of snowy escape but I tried to not use as much of it as the other things there is a lot of base game things in this though but unfortunately I ended up using at least one thing from nearly every pack so it is a bit annoying if you want to download it from the gallery I'm so sorry I will try to get better I want to start doing some more base game only builds or some builds that just use one or two packs so that way it's more accessible for everyone because I know not everyone can afford to buy all the packs it's definitely taken me a few years to get all the packs but I honestly cried when I had them all it was so exciting I always wanted to own all the packs so that's really exciting that I have them now but I do understand that other people aren't as fortunate and I want to try and make these builds and make my videos suitable for everyone. I want everyone to be able to watch them. I want everyone to be able to enjoy The Sims. Even if you do just have a base game. Because they have updated it a bit over the years. And it's gotten more interesting. They've got some really nice base game stuff. And I do tend to use a lot of the base game plants. And base game walls. A lot. So I want to make sure everyone can use them. Anyway we're nearly finished with this build. We've moved on to the upstairs I don't have any screenshots in this one I wanted to save them all for the final video and I, in the bedroom I just went for sort of an industrial sort of thing using I think the wall lights are from Star Wars actually which is kind of an underrated pack in my opinion it gets a lot of hate I really liked the Star Wars pack and I put the green wall actually that came from one of the base game updates that had all the plants on it. I really like that leaf wall. The only thing is the siding is a dark brown and not a black like the rest of the walls. But you can't really tell. And if you play with the walls down, then you, you won't even know. It's fine. It's we not everything's going to be perfect none of the swatches match in the sims anyway so we're just going to roll with it it kind of matches the bed though i suppose it's dark brown and black so we're, we'll pretend it's intentional i definitely meant to do it i also forgot to add a door to the bedroom for a minute and as i started furnishing it furnishing the second bedroom i realized they had no way of getting in except for climbing over the lounge and busting a hole through the wall so I did fix that up. I added a door in and I put a single bed. This room is pretty basic. I imagine it's just like a guest bedroom or maybe a sim that lived there and has moved out. I did just keep it pretty basic as well. I didn't want to add too much to the build because it may get a little bit laggy and I didn't want to fill it out with sims that don't live there. I like to leave a bit of space for your sims to grow and for them to add their own little items and the backyard pretty much looks the same barbecue table this one had more greenery and a pool because it's so much nicer to have a pool especially since they didn't have a shed there was more room to put a little pool in i did put some planters because i kind of imagined that the people that live here they like to plant they like to garden and so i tried to fit that and as we are nearing the end of the build, I'm going to leave the video here. Part 2 will be up on Friday. If you want to find this on the gallery, my ID is ZoeKate12. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!